Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then subscribe and click on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, a Choosing Beggar wants to be given a car. Well, the OP has two, and if you have two of anything, you have to give one away. That's why I'm hopping around my house. Let's jump right in. I have a nice Dodge Charger, 2010. Yeah, she is a bit old, but she is still sweet and full of options, and I take good care of her. My father got me a brand new Corolla last year, even though I told him not to buy me a new car, because this one is still good and running, but he didn't believe me and still got me the new car. So now I have two cars, and I didn't want to sell the Charger because my wife loves the car, and I'm keeping it for her. Now sometimes I drive to my workplace with the Dodge and sometimes with the Corolla, and here comes the choosing beggar of our story. Keep in mind, whenever I talk to choosing beggar at my workplace, it is always about business related stuff. But then he started talking in this weird way where you can tell he is going to ask for a really big favor out of you. Gee, OP, your car looks nice, man. Can I have it for like a minute? I want to go and buy some grocery stuff right here, and I'll bring it right back to you. I don't have a car. I really didn't want to give him my car. I really didn't want to, but the place he was going to was near, and I think it was safe to give him the car for like 10 minutes, and I didn't want to decline his somehow reasonable request, so why not? Um, sure, but please be very careful with the car. 20 minutes goes by and I started to feel like I was suffocating. Where the heck is my car? 30 minutes goes by and Choosing Beggar brings my car and one of his friends is with him in my car. Not a big deal, but still, what the heck? Would you take one of your friends along in someone else's car? He hands me over the key and he was so happy he got to drive it and you can see that in his eyes. Days go by and his love for my car is growing bigger and bigger. I can tell by the way he was talking to me. You lucky bastard, you have two nice cars. And things like that. And then he asks me after a week to borrow the car again. This time I declined. And I said it was a one-time deal only. And I was sorry. What do you think will happen? I will take good care of her. Come on, man. Nope, not gonna happen. <sighs> okay... Now, I swear this never happened to me before, as I am a safe driver, but in the next month I had four tiny accidents with my Charger and one big accident with the Corolla. All of them, I did nothing wrong, so it was all the other party's fault. I felt like he jinxed me or something. I even had two nightmares where the mother flipper took my cars and crashed the both of them. So that month, I was fixing both of my cars in the workshop and I had to take my brother's car to work and his car was a brand new Altima. I took it to the workplace that day and sure enough, it was the choosing beggar who was the first one to see my car and he then comes to my office saying, OP, that brand new Altima is yours too? No, no, it's my brother's. I'm just using it right now until I get my cars fixed. You are really, really lucky, OP. How is the charger? Not bad. Can I have it once it's fixed? Wink. I told you no. But come on, man. What do you think? The car is old, and it isn't right for you anymore. I don't have a car, and you have this brand new Corolla. Give me the charger. I will take good care of her. Don't worry, man. He was asking to have my car all the time. Not for the day, not for the week, no, the whole time. At this point, I was shocked of how stupid and unrealistic his request was. I mean, did this really happen? Did he ask to have my car just because I have two? Right then, looking at the idiot, I decided I don't want to talk to this person again ever in my life. I looked him in the eye with the most serious and dead eyes you can imagine, and I just simply said, no. Now, whenever he sees me, I just give him the look, and he just walks away and never talks to me. In Story 2, our original poster teaches us how to politely say no to choosing beggars asking for free work without burning any bridges so that you might get some real work from them in the future. Thank you so much for getting in touch. It is so flattering that you would want me to be part of your business project. Unfortunately, I need to say no to your request. At the beginning of each year, 
I calculate how many hours I can dedicate to free and voluntary work requests. I have already filled the slots I have available for this year. I don't have any time available at this point. I would be happy to discuss taking this on as a paid project for you, but I can't offer the work for free. If budget is the issue, could I suggest maybe posting your request in this Facebook group or reading this article or DIYing it with this free online tool? Let me know if there is another way I can support what you're doing. Again, I am so grateful that you considered me for this, and I hope there is a way we can work together in the future. Story 3 shows us a choosing beggar getting a photo shoot, who insists that her photographer is the guy with the big muscles. Well, we all know photographers and beefcake go hand in hand. I hear Ansel Adams could bench press like 350 pounds. I'm a professional photographer with my own studio. I also do off-site shoots. My best friend is also a photographer with me, and while he is an amazing photographer, he has no formal training. I have an AD in professional photography, not bragging, just giving context. This isn't something I tell my clients. Also for context, my best friend is younger than me, but he works out and his arms and chest are huge, and I don't work out so I'm not as big. I'm strong, but not big. I also trained in several different forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, so... Anyway, we had this woman come to the studio demanding a photo shoot for headshots for her for work. Okay, no problem. Easiest thing to do. We charge her and bring her into the studio. Up to now, everything is fine. Then, she sees my best friend adjusting the light rigs and thought he was the photographer. Him and I trade off who runs point on shoots, if it's high profile shoot, I usually take the lead. She runs up to him and starts telling him what she wants. He cuts her off and tells her that I'm the photographer. She looks at me and says, but he's just a kid. In her defense, I do look younger than I am and I had just shaved that morning. He told her that I was in fact the photographer and also was older than him. She said, you're lying. You're clearly older than him because your muscles are bigger. No, I just work out more. He is older than me and he's the head photographer for the company. He's one of the best. She turns to me, fine, but only because your boss says you're good. I shake my head and start going through the procedure. Look through the viewfinder of the camera. No shadow there, move it left, perfect. Let's roll. I took the pictures and showed them to her. Now, we collect a non-refundable deposit before services are rendered for our own protection, and they sign a GSA, General Service Agreement. She sees the pictures and says they're horrible. She wants her money back. Sorry, Karen, the deposit is non-refundable. What email address would you like me to send the watermarked photos to? I told you he was the pro, not you. Ma'am, I... No, he will retake my photos. No, he won't. It's either these or nothing. And I am a professional. I have an associate's degree in professional photography and over six years of prior photography experience working with the Air Force. Needless to say, she didn't get her photos or her deposit back. In our final story, a choosing beggar is so insistent on getting a deal on a bike that he starts driving to pick up the bike before the deal is even made. Hey, you still got the bike for sale? What's your lowest price? Hey there, yes, the bike is still available. I'm asking $250, but I'm a little negotiable on the price. How much were you thinking? Well, you're in blank, right? If I get a ride to pick it up, can you do 100 Because you're like an hour away. No, sorry, 100 is way too low. I've had offers for 200 already, so 220 would be the lowest I would accept. Unless you can come get it today, and then I'll let it go for 200 I gotta drive an hour to you, man, so 120 is all you're gonna get. Or you drop it off to me in like two hours, and I'll give you 140 okay? I'm sorry, I already stated in the ad that it was pick-up only. I won't deliver it. And as I said, I've already had offers for $200 tomorrow from people locally, so I don't see any reason for me to accept your offer. But let me know if you can come pick it up for $200 anytime today, and it's yours.
Dude, come on, you're being dumb. You're not going to get 200 for it. Just bring it to me and get 120 right now. Yo, I found a ride. I'll be there in like 45 minutes. What's your address? I got 100 cash for you right now, ASAP. Hello, dude. All right, man. The offer is going to keep getting less if you don't reply, man. Right now, I got 80 for you. Answer, or when I get there, I'll only pay 60. I'm not giving you my address because I'm not accepting your offer. I've already said multiple times now that I won't take less than $200 for it, so I don't know where you're driving right now, but you're not buying my bike for $60 or $80 or even $100. I really hope you're not actually driving towards me because if so, you're just wasting time and gas. Please don't contact me again unless you're bringing $200 for my bike. Man, flip you! You're full of stuff! We had a flippin' deal and now you're backing out? How about I just take your flippin' bike and you don't get stuff? See you soon, blank boy! Sounds great! I'll see you when you get here, bud. Let me know how long it takes you to find my house. If you can find me before the end of the day, you can have the bike for free. Ha <laughs> ha, you think you're funny, just wait. Tell me where you live if you think you're so tough. Okay, alright, fine man, I'll give you 220. Where's your address? What's your address? This has been John from Slash Bash, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.